Joining me now is former Highmark Insurance CEO, Dr. Bill Winkenwerter, and family and emergency medicine physician, Dr. Jeanette Nejawat. Dr. Winkenwerter, you knew that this was a flawed plan from the beginning. The Democrats still think it's awesome sauce, except for the fact that it's so expensive. But they say, I've, I've heard it, multitudes of Democrats say, well, we wanted to insure more people. Almost 20 million people have gotten insurance. What's wrong with it? Meg, uh, Dagan, this is a, a bill that is massively complex. It took three years to write the regulations, two years to pass the bill. We were, we're in the third year of it, and people don't like it. Lots of people don't like it, and it's not working. It's so wearing premiums. Uh, astronomically high deductibles, people have lost their insurance providers, they don't have doctor choice, and you're going to start to see health care costs continue to balloon. It has not lowered health care costs at all. In fact, it's helped inflate health care costs. And the goal was 30 to 35 million people covered. It's only reached 20 million covered, and half of those are Medicaid. Right. Could have been very easily done with just an expansion of the Medicaid program. The number of people who are newly covered through the exchanges is about 10 million. Five million of those people were already covered with insurance. So we've had this incredibly large, complex, overbearing law to get five million people covered. And so there is a path forward, though. Well, and I think that uh, Secretary-elect, uh, or designate Tom Price, Price mm -hmm. uh, has a plan that uh, has a lot of good aspects to it. And Democrats ought to be working with Republicans, not saying make but America Dr. sick again. But Dr. Jeanette, they're not going to do that. Yeah. And so they're going to let the Republicans potentially make a big mistake. And one of the concerns is you do repeal, and then you have a sunset on the repeal of two to four years, and you don't have a quick replacement in place. And that could do more damage potentially. I've heard that from both sides it's of the aisle. It's a huge problem. It's just like Paul Ryan said you can't pull the rug from underneath people, you can't take away what they've been given. That's very scary for most people who, for the first time, are having a medical insurance. You know, we have the most innovative medical care in the world, but the costs are astronomical. And you know what? It's very detrimental what's happening to the patient-doctor relationship. As a doctor and a director here in New York City for a major medical group, you know, my number one priority, my number one focus is patient care. I want to be able to give good patient care to my patients. Well, what do you want, what That's do you want so Washington to do? You know, well, tax cuts, or I'm sorry, credit, uh, credit, uh, tax credits, health savings accounts, no mandates. We need to eliminate yep. the mandates. We need to eliminate discrimination, and we need to allow more options for patients. That's so important. That's why I'm a huge fan of Dr. Price. He's all about envisionment of empowering the patient, putting the power back in the hands of the patients and the doctors, not the federal government. And, and you do have to worry about disruption in terms of... You do. It, what do the insurers do if they think that the if the repeal is passed and then we're not That's certain right. what the plan is? That's right. Like so this is like a, a, uh, a Rubik's Cube to unwind because it was a Rube Goldberg thing being put together. I mean, it was really a complex law. It touches so many things. So, you know, you can break it down, though. There's the Medicaid piece. There's the Medicare piece. There's the exchanges. Uh, which are where the subsidies are. So there's some things that can be done to greatly simplify the subsidy part, which is with the refundable tax credits. Which is part of the, the Right now it's just plan. overly complex. I was CEO at Highmark during the time that right. we implemented this law. There was a change about every week, if not every day, in the regulation. And that has continued. It's way too complex. And if you, I just was reading a, a survey from employers Employers identify this law as one of their biggest problems, uh, you know, that they deal with because it's so complex and the reporting requirements are huge. A lot of that can be eliminated. Well, I actually touched on that yesterday when I interviewed the former head of H um, Health and Human mm -hmm. Services, Kathleen Sebelius, that the National Federation of Independent Businesses in their most recent survey, this is, this is small businesses, it's, it, thousands of them, the most severe problem is the cost of health insurance and health care. And she literally said, they always say that. You know, well, I, you know what, eight, eight, 
after mm. we've had what it was passed in 2010, we've had more than six years six of Obamacare, years. Yeah. and they're still saying it. So that means that you didn't fix it. And the deductibles mm. are going higher, premiums are going higher, there's less choices, there's less options for patients, doctors are working more hours, um, and they're having less, working less resources, patients have less options, and this is very detrimental to the patient-doctor relationship because a doctor needs to create a bond, needs to create trust with their patient. They need to connect with their patient. And the reason why this is so important is better patient outcomes. If the doctor trusts you, if your doctor trusts if you trust your doctor, you're going to take your blood pressure medicine. You're going to watch your sugars. You're going to you know, follow up with your doctor. And, and in the long run, you're going to live longer. So anything that erodes the sanctity of the patient-doctor relationship, in my opinion, is sinful and unlawful. I think it's kind of rich. I know that Senator Rand Paul has come out against this, and he's get, basically he's against this because of budget reasons so far in terms of the repeal, re which is ironic that a libertarian is against repealing well, an entitlement the, program. Well, but. Th there are some issues with respect to the taxes and uh, fund, sources of funds that were in the Affordable Care Act, because if those are all removed, you have to come up with new funds. Where are the dollars going to come from? to create these refundable tax credits. So, uh, but there's a path forward, uh, Dagan, I really believe that. There's a path forward if Democrats will work with Republicans and be constructive about this. And, and I think big picture, and I'll, I'll give you the final word, Dr. Jeanette, is that this is about taking power out of the hands of the federal government and bureaucrats yes. and putting it back in the hands of the states, the doctors, and the patients themselves about driving their own care and handling their own costs. Absolutely. The bottom line is we need a change. We need a positive change. This isn't about Washington. This is about the American people, patients in our country, and doing what's best for them. They need more options. They need affordable health care, and they need good quality health care. And you know what? We put a man on the moon. We should be able to come up with something. Yes, and we should. Um, I think when uh, Dr. Price gets confirmed, um, we're going to have uh, good things to come. And let's so make it simpler. Let's that. make it simpler. Thank you. you. From your mouth to I hope they're all listening. Yes. Dr. Winkenwater, good to see you. Thank and Dr. you. Dr. Jeanette Nejewat, take care. Good Thank you so much. Thanks for having me.